Saturday, August 19th, I think. Sounds all right. Uh, and I'm on the west end of Big Sag. It's uh, about 6.30. I didn't start getting up until about quarter to six this morning. Uh, of course, I had to do a few things before I got to the book at this point. For some strange reason, I wasn't able to get to sleep last night. Dust and turned for quite a while. Finally got up at about midnight, and I discovered that the northern lights were making a little bit of an appearance. Took a few shots. For a while, the lights were getting better, but then they faded, faded almost completely, and. Uh, Well, well, I sat out here for a while waiting for the baby to come back. Went back to bed about 2.30. Still had a little bit of trouble getting back to sleep, but uh, eventually I did. The amazing thing is that I woke up at uh, about 6 o'clock. I was expecting I have a hard time getting up this morning, but didn't really. Let's see what the rest of the day brings. So yeah, I'm operating on about four hours of sleep right now. If that. Breakfast this morning is cinnamon and spice. Today I have a short paddle across to that five ride portage. It takes me into Swamp Lake. And a little bit longer paddle, but not very far. Gets me to Monument Portage, which I believe was 80 rods, if I remember correctly. And that gets me to Otter Track. A short paddle gets me across Otter Track to the campsite I want to get. But if that's not open, then I've got a long paddle to get to the other end of the auto track and hope that one of those other four campsites are open.
after nine. So I didn't do too badly this morning, considering all the footage I got and all the rest of it. And I'm just approaching the uh, five rod portage into Swamp Lake. Decent enough landing if I can avoid the rocks. <laughs> okay. For having such a ugly name, Swamp Lake. I know I could Mike would disagree with that. <laughs> it being an ugly name, being called Swamp. But for being such a dismal sounding name. It's actually quite a beautiful lake. You would have expected by the end of August that uh, it would be all weedy with a name like that. There are some weeds. It's obviously pretty shallow. But it's hard to Hard to see why it warrants the name Swamp. And again, we're following the uh, U.S. Canadian border right here. In fact, I probably stepped into Canada a little bit when I was coming across that portage. In fact, actually, the whole portage is in Canada. So in fact it's not a portage, it's a portage. <laughs> Back when they signed the treaty establishing the border in here, they, uh, they set up the boundary so it followed the established trade routes and they specified that Citizens of both countries had equal access to all the lakes and any established portages or portages along the, the chain. So there are places where the portage is on the U.S. side and there are places where the portage is on the Canadian side. What a gorgeous morning. It's supposed to get up to about 80 today. Warm for my liking, but hopefully by the time it gets there, I'll be in camp and I have camp all set up. And be enjoying find a nice shady spot. Hmm, I didn't remember there being a pier here. Um, oop, not gonna make it through on this side.
Okay. I guess maybe this is why they call it Swamp Lake. <laughs> okay. Now, I think. In here. Is this going to work? I don't know if I bumped into the pier, it's not going to work. <laughs> This is the Monument Portage and on Otter Track Lake. <laughs> uh, seems like the lilies should be out more than this for now.
Okay, Sean, if you're watching this, I don't know if you watch the channel at all anyway, but if you're watching this, this is what you call serious bluffage. Right there, serious bluffage. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, the campsite I wanted is taken. People just arrived. This is what I've been looking for. Benny Ambrose. October. Yeah. October. Benjamin Ambrose, or Benny as he was commonly known, was one of the last people allowed to live in what is now known as the Bounty Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. Born in Iowa around 1896, Benny arrived in northern Minnesota shortly after World War I. Making a living trapping, guiding, and prospecting, Benny gradually developed a homestead on Otter Track Lake starting in the late 1920s or early 1930s. Ambrose started a vegetable garden, often transporting black soil from Iowa. He raised carrots, radishes, rutabagas, lettuce, and potatoes. Benny thwarted many attempts by the authorities to evict him, partly due to t connections he had made through his guiding. He managed to live out his life on Otter Track Lake until his death of an apparent heart attack in August 1982. A small plaque has been installed on the Canadian side of the lake directly across from his homestead. The homestead itself was raised 
by the U.S. Forest Service shortly after his death. A look around his homestead and the views he enjoyed there make it obvious why he didn't want to give up his homestead or his way of life. track the Benny's Memorial and Benny's homestead were on my to-do list so they're to done now so at least I don't have to come paddling all the way back and in some ways this is going to be better because if I do head on over that little chain of lakes over to Cherry, I'll be a lot closer to the start of that chain. I won't be making this long paddle and then having to start. So here's the canoe landing. And then we go up the hill. Up, 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 up we go. Can't complain about it not having shade. Although there's some open too. So this, of course, is the kitchen area. Look at this big, huge log here. Wow. Okay. Looks like there's plenty of room, plenty of places to put a tent. Put a uh, dining floor, or a tarp up. Kind of screen from the lake a little bit. Unfortunately, this is between two within earshot of two large groups. But it's a case of either uh, take this one or gamble that the one closer to the Knife Lake Portage is still open. Check that out and then come back and hope that this is still open. And I, at the moment, I'm all out of paddle. So. 
I think I'll make this work. Not sure if I'll make it one or two nights here. I looked for the portage that I that I was planning on taking after this. And if I saw what I th if what I saw was actually the portage, I'm not sure I want to do it. I don't want, I'm not even sure I want want to attempt it. So I may be changing my plans. Not doing that chain of lakes, not getting back to Cherry Lake. But uh oh we'll look at that and discuss that later. For now I gotta start hauling the things up from the boat and see about making camp. It's about four thirty in the afternoon and time for a map update and a plan update so first of all the map update uh, as you know I started out or should know started out from this campsite here way on the west end of Saganica Lake came across this uh, five rod portage across Swamp Lake across the very interesting monument portage by the way, I only showed two of the markers that coming across. There's actually three of them. Okay, then I came into Otter Track and uh, came down and this campsite, which is the one I wanted, was just being occupied as I arrived. So then I went up over this peninsula here. Uh, I visited Benny Ambrose's monument, which is on the Canadian side over here. And then I visited his homestead, which is on this peninsula here, this little point here. From there, I came on down the rest of Otter Track, checked out the portage into Gigi Kiki Lake, at least the start of the portage. Um, this campsite was taken. This campsite was taken. So I took the one in between because otherwise I would have had to go up around this corner and check out this site. And if that was taken, I'd have to come all the way back. It's an okay campsite. Um, Plenty of places to put up tents, a decent landing, decent place to uh, swim or wade. Uh, biggest problem is there's not much of a view of the lake from here and uh, no sitting point or anything like that. A couple of things I have decided. Uh, first of all, I've decided I cannot do this chain of lakes in through here between here and Cherry. That's just more than I can handle by myself. If I was uh, with somebody else, it might be doable. But to do this solo, I mean, there's a very tough 50 ride portage up and down. And I mean up, up, up. And then down, down, down. Uh, 35 rod, a 75 rod, a 10 rod, and then a 45 to get into Cherry. I'd love to get back into Cherry again, but I'm not going to get to it from that direction, that's for sure. I What I've decided to do instead is I'm going to take the 5 rod into Knife Lake. I'm going to come down through here and I'm going to take this 20 rod portage, which I took last year, into Amoeba Lake. And I'm going to hope to get this island site that I couldn't get last year because somebody was on it when I got there. I should be getting there early in the day, so unless somebody's base, base camp there, hopefully that'll it'll be open. 
and so it'll be of course that's what I said about today but it should be a short day just a five rod portage this 20 rod portage is tough because it's a uh, steep uphill but I mean that's all I've got is a little bit of paddling uh, you know five rod here a 20 rod there so I think I should be able to do that the other decision I made, I was originally going to stay here two nights. I've had two, two traveling days in a row. Today wasn't supposed to be a bad traveling day, but that was because I thought I was going to get that campsite. By the time I got down here, it was 1.30, a lot of paddling. So I was going to have a layover, take a layover day tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but I've just decided there's just too many people around here. This is not my kind of Boundary Waters experience. Uh, all these campsites real close, so close together. Um, now I haven't heard any noise from either of those sites. I, I've got to admit since I got here. This one was pretty noisy as I paddled past. But I haven't heard anything since. But it's just, you know... There's been all this canoe traffic in here, too. People looking for campsites and everything else. This isn't the best campsite, as far as I'm concerned. It's uh, got limited photographic potential. I mean, it's, it's a decent campsite. A lot of people would love it. <laughs> but for me, it's just not that good of a campsite. It's too shady. I can't get my battery charger charged up because there's just no sunlight in here. There might be a little bit more in the morning, but there's not going to be a lot because even on the east side, it's it's so well screened. So, um, I know I complain a lot about the sites that are too open, too sunny, but this one's too shady. It's just... <laughs> it's I know it's tough to satisfy me and and like I said beyond that uh, just too crowded too many people coming through too many people for the campsites that are here I know Amoeba is going to be quieter there's less there's fewer people that go through there and uh so it'll, it'll, it's going to be a little bit more isolated. If Amoeba isn't open, uh, if both of those campsites are taken, I can always do the 20 rod into Topaz, see if that site's open. If that's not open, take the 5 rod into Cherry, which is where I intended to be at the end of the day tomorrow anyway. So... Assuming I get to Amoeba tomorrow, then I'll spend two nights on Amoeba, and then I'll head on down into, uh, well, I'll show you where I'm heading from there when the time comes. And dinner tonight is sweet and sour pork with rice. It's about quarter after seven and I'm out for a little evening panel.
pretty moss right in there. Maybe this is the thing I found in here. Boy, it doesn't show. It's not where my map shows up. But what else is new? I just tried walking across the Gigi. I made it to the top of the portage. Had to use my hands to get up part of it, which of course would not be an option with the canoe on my shoulders. And uh, from the top, I could see a big marshy area with some half rotted logs crossing it. And I decided not to go any further. Granted, I'm wearing my Crocs and not my boots, but still, that, uh, that portage is not for me. And of course, it's the first of several. And now, I am very, very happy that I didn't attempt going through those uh, portages, those lakes, last year. Because I might have made it to Gigi. <laughs> and then discovered I needed to backtrack. <clears throat> so. so that chain of lakes is beyond my reach. I'm not even sure I could do it with a, another person unless they were significantly younger than me and did most of the carrying. But I don't see me being able to do it anymore. So... Amoeba it is. I'll go with plan B. Or maybe it's plan C by now. Well, it's about quarter to nine. And I'm in my tent, as you can see. I heard the Canadian Air Force warming up their engines ready for their nightly invasion so I thought I better take shelter and I only got a handful of mosquitoes in tonight instead of the bunches I've had other nights so I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to put my sheet thing on my thermorest tonight and use my sleeping bag as a quilt. It's only supposed to get down and down to about 60 tonight, which is pretty warm. So, I think that's called for. I'm half tempted to use my little fleece liner thingy by itself. Instead of using the sleeping bag at all. But I think I'll try the sleeping bag to start with. If it's too warm. Then I'll. Uh, then maybe I'll switch over. So anyway. That's about all I have for tonight. So. We'll talk to you in the morning. which will be just a few hours from now for me, but a week or so or more for you. Good night.